Hello everyone, this is Scan City Academy. In the previous lecture, we learned how to find the total resistance for a closed circuit. However, in this video, we are going to focus more on finding the total resistance for a short circuit. Let's start with this lecture by considering these two circuits. The circuit on the left has a voltage source connected across a resistor, while the circuit on the right has a voltage source connected directly to itself. Now, which of these two circuits is a short circuit? Is it the one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right is the short circuit. Now, what is a short circuit? A short circuit is basically any circuit with very little or no electrical resistance. This causes very high amounts of current to flow through the circuit. Short circuit is generally not desired. Because when very high amounts of current flows through the circuit, they heat up the wire which may cause fire outbreak. However, a short circuit can be prevented by introducing a fuse or a circuit breaker. These devices do well by preventing very high current from reaching the load. What this primarily means is that when a fuse is rated 5 amperes, then it's going to block current greater than 5 amperes from reaching the load. The circuit on the left is a closed circuit which has a resistor CR. This is not a short circuit because the resistor limits the current that flows throughout the circuit. Notice that a short circuit is also a closed circuit because there is no break in the circuit and current is able to flow throughout the circuit. Now let's move ahead and solve a few examples. Let's say we are given a circuit that looks like this. And then we have to find the total resistance for this particular circuit. Now in this circuit, we have an 8 volt voltage source connected across a 4 ohm resistor. And then we also have a thin wire connected across the 4 ohm resistor. Is this a short circuit? If yes, how do we solve for the total resistance? Now one way to identify a short circuit is if there appears to be very little or no electrical resistance between two nodes. Now between these two nodes, there is no or very little electrical resistance. So this is a short circuit. Again, if you can go through an entire loop without passing through any other circuit element except one resistor, then that circuit is a short circuit. Now we realize that for this circuit, we can go through the entire loop without passing through any other circuit element except the 4 ohm resistor. So this circuit is a short circuit. Notice that whenever current approaches a junction, it divides to flow through different paths. However, for the case of a short circuit, all the current will like to flow through the low resistant path. So instead of dividing, all the current will like to move through this direction with zero current moving through this direction. When that happens, you can redraw the circuit to have the 8 volt voltage source directly connected to itself because no current will flow through the 4 ohm resistor. So the current that flows through the circuit will be the maximum current delivered by the voltage source which is close to infinity. Ideally, the total resistance for this circuit is supposed to be zero. However, we cannot have zero resistance in practice because the thin wire may have very little electrical resistance. So the total resistance for this particular circuit will be close to zero. Now let's take another example. Let's say we are given this circuit and then we have to find the total resistance for this particular circuit. How do we solve this? Which of the resistors have been short circuited? The 4 ohm resistor has been short circuited. This is because we can go through the entire loop without passing through any other circuit element except the 4 ohm resistor. And same applies to the 2 ohm resistor. Considering this loop, we can go through this whole loop without passing through any other circuit element except the 2 ohm resistor. So both the 4 and the 2 ohm resistor have been short circuited. 
so the circuit can be reduced to have the seven volts voltage source connected in series with the three ohm resistor. Now, since the current produced by the voltage source flows through only the three ohm resistor, the total resistance for this particular circuit is equal to three ohms. Now let's solve our very last example for this video. Let's say we want to find the total resistance for this particular circuit. Fast forward, we realize that the 10 ohm resistor has been short circuited because you can go through this loop without passing through any other circuit element except the 10 ohm resistor. So this is a short circuit. Now because we have a short circuit here, the current is going to move through this direction, ignoring the 10 ohm resistor. So the circuit can be redrawn as we have our 3.4 ohm resistor here and then our 8 ohm resistor and then this 2 ohm resistor. Now the 2 ohm resistor is connected in parallel with the 8 ohm resistor. This is because we can go through the entire loop without passing through any other circuit element except the two resistors. So they are connected in parallel. So their equivalent is going to be 2 times 8 divided by 2 plus 8. Now 2 times 8 is equal to 16 and then 2 plus 8 is equal to 10. So RT prime is equal to 1.6 ohm. Now the 1.6 ohm is going to be in series with the 3.4 ohm. So this is how the circuit is going to look like. We are going to have the 3.4 ohm resistor in series with the 1.6 ohm resistor. So since they are connected in series, we are going to add them. So the total resistance is going to be 3.4 plus 1.6, which is equal to 5 ohms. So the total resistance for this particular circuit is going to be 5 ohms. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we will be focusing on delta star transformation. If you like the content of this video, feel free to like, comment and share among friends. Don't forget to subscribe to receive more interesting videos. Hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye.